Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2021 Online. We are not going to wait to get the hype going for this one. We are headed into Evergate with Sunny Muffin. Best of luck. I'm Sunny Muffin, and with me today is Ghost Kuma. You want to go ahead and say hi? Hello, everybody. We're going to be doing some Evergate Any% percent today, but before we get started, there was an incentive for Soul Flame Color, so if we could just quickly confirm the winner of that bid war. I believe it was purple. I can check for you. Um, yes, it was purple. All right, so we're gonna be doing some purple soul flame today. All right, let's so, go. <laughs> purple is the color of speed, according to world record holder Black Rose. All right, so with that said, we have a little bit of intro time to do some explanations, so we're just gonna go ahead and dive right into it. Uh, I'll go ahead and count, it, count us off in five, four, three, two, one, go. All right, this is Evergate. It is a level-based 2D puzzle platformer from Stone Lantern Games. We're gonna be going through about 75 levels in the main run today, and then an additional nine bonus levels right after the main run, because y'all are great. And you met that incentive super early, so much love. Uh, the category we're running today is any percent unrestricted, which just means we don't care about collectibles, and we can use all artifacts and tricks within the run. We're running on the Steam version of the game, which allows a hybrid control scheme. Anytime you see this little cursor here, I'm on KBM. And if you don't see it, I'm on controller. I'm gonna be swapping pretty frequently throughout the run, so try to spot the swaps. This is our little spirit friend, Keith. We're gonna be following her journey through the afterlife. In the lore, when you die, you pass through the Evergate before getting reincarnated. However, upon arriving, we discover the afterlife is under attack from nightmares, and it's up to us to stop it. To do that, we need to master the game's soul flame mechanic. Do you want to go ahead and explain that, Ghost? Yeah, so the soul flame is your primary uh, means of solving everything in this game. Uh, essentially, the way it works is you point a linear ray of light in any given direction, and if the ray of light connects to anything colored white, which is referred to as a source, you can press the button to interact with it. And occasionally this involves interacting with an object itself, but it usually in means interacting with objects that your uh, ray of light passes through. Uh, primarily the crystals, which are going to make up the majority of this game's level design. No, not at all. We can go and restart that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Alrighty. Uh, also, I don't have a stream preview, so... Oh, we can go ahead and, we can go ahead and do that real quick. <laughs> that probably helped considerably. <laughs> okay. I'll start. <laughs> Penalty. Five yards. <laughs> Alrighty. Let me know when we are good to go. Alright, let me delete my file real quick. Alright. So we're gonna have a have a first try start here in five, four, three. Two, one, go. Alrighty. We actually reset. <laughs> Everyone says reset. Oh, this we is, actually we, we always get those resets out. All right. So yeah, again, just uh, this is Evergate. It is a level-based 2D puzzle platformer from Stone Lantern. Uh, we're going to be doing about 75 levels in the main run today, and nine bonus levels in the main run, because y'all are great, and you already met that incentive. That was met like yesterday, which is awesome, so much love. Uh, we're, we're going to be doing some any percent unrestricted. That just means we don't care about collectibles and can use all artifacts and tricks within the run. We're also running on the Steam version of the game. It allows a hybrid control scheme. Anytime you see this little cursor here that I'm flying around with, I'm on KBM. And if you don't see it, I'm on controller. I will be swapping pretty frequently throughout the run. So see if you could spot those swaps. This is our little spirit friend, Key. Uh, we're going to be following her journey through the afterlife. In the lore, when you die, you pass through the Evergate before you get reincarnated. Um, however, when Key gets to the afterlife, it's under attack by nightmares. And we're gonna be trying to stop that throughout the game. So uh, to do that, we need to master the game soul flame mechanic. You wanna go ahead and explain that for us? Yes, point cursor at light, interact with thing, can do thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, do we get a second time isn't it, isn't it the same? <laughs> Anyways, yes, so as, as we mentioned earlier, uh, anytime you point at uh, the uh, soul flame at something you can interact with it um usually has to, it has to be um, a white source um you'll see the grass here on this um rotating circle here um also if you aim your soul flame and it's passing through any of the crystals um which you'll see here in just a moment um 
you break the crystals and it has some sort of bonus effect. And this is what makes up the majority of this game's level design. Um, kind of nice, neat little thing to note that's important that we just demonstrated in the tutorial is you can actually hold your jump. You can run off a platform and then jump in midair so long as you haven't jumped uh, before. Uh, one of the things this game often gets compared to is, uh, it's, I think a lot of people like look at it and they're like, whoa, this looks a lot like Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, apart from the main character being white and kind of the color scheme and art design and symphonic orchestral soundtrack, that's really where the similarities end. It's its, its own, it's very much its own unique game. And in my opinion, it was uh, my personal favorite game of 2020. So I definitely hope you guys consider checking this game out. Yeah. Uh, but getting straight into the first world of the game. This game's fantastic. Um, so, whenever people come in to see a speedrun in this game, I always tell them the biggest difference between a speedrun and a casual playthrough of this game is the slowdown mechanic. Um, so, I was forced to use the slowdown mechanic at the beginning to do the to complete the tutorial, but you're not going to see it very often throughout the run. Uh, the game does have two different slowdown speeds, so you can do a complete pause or you can do a 50% slowdown. And both of those uh, are just to allow some more precision to make the game a little bit more casual. But we're going to be using the quick fire mechanic. We want to go back. So you see here on the first uh, row, he's breaking these orange crystals. The orange crystals in this game are boost crystals. Um, whatever direction you're pointing your soul flame at, um, the boost crystals will launch you uh, a certain amount of mem certain memento the other way. Yeah, and this now, is one of the neat. Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, so one of the neat things about this game is actually reward speed running on. Um, um, in every level, there's going to be more crystals than necessary. Um, that's because if you break every crystal, collect every one of those little orbs, or beat the game, beat the level in under a part time, you get what's called an essence, um, and you use those essence to unlock artifacts. And uh, thankfully, latest patch, you only have to get three essence to get the first artifact. And the first artifact is really useful. It's the uh, Lucky Frog. It gives him 20% additional uh, boost, which allows him to sort of get more boost than the levels were really like made for and allowing him to do a number of skips throughout the run. Yeah, and again, you also see a number of different types of sources here. The flowers uh, sometimes will reveal a crystal once you break them. The um, boxes which break on one use, or on one, on one uh, crystal break, and um, uh, the rotating platforms. Yeah, we'll see a whole, whole gambit of different sources. Um, so yeah, at this point, we discover the Evergate is showing us memories, but they're not Key's memories. They're the memories of an unnamed antagonist that we in the community like to refer to as Ha. Uh, these two spirits share a kindred bond, and it's the damage to that bond that's causing the afterlife to be attacked. So we're going to be traveling through some of their various lives and figure out what's causing the rift between these two spirits. Yeah, so we're getting to the second world here, and in the second world is the Earth Crystals. Um, these generate a platform underneath uh, Key's feet, or whatever she uses to move around. It's not quite explicitly uh, stated. Uh, she looks like a, a cinder, an ember, so to speak. Um, but more importantly, with the Earth Crystals and generating platforms, um, or on top of that, uh, it allows uh, sort of a reset on the jump, uh, which means Sunny's going to be able to just, like, use them to get additional height and distance pretty frequently and just completely circumventing like entire huge sections of many levels uh, which is kind of a running theme with this run uh, there's a lot of crystals that you can use to just sort of jump over everything in a number of levels yeah the game is very well designed and where if you're just trying to complete the puzzle you can do it in a variety of different ways. Like there's not just one way to finish the level. Um, if you're trying to 100% the level and break all crystals and get all the various essence, it gets a little bit more complicated. But just for the any percent run, routing was actually a lot of fun because you get to see like the absolute bare minimum you need to finish out the run. Yeah, and with so many skips, like one of the things I always say is like a sign of a good puzzle platformer is when you feel like you can actually outsmart the game in a way. Like, this game has several different ways to beat levels, including some of which which don't really feel intended. And I think those actually, like, greatly add to the enjoyment of the game when you feel like you've outsmarted the game. Yeah, well, I was watching a casual streamer today that 100%ed a level that, in a way that I was just, like, completely blown away by. I was like, I, I never even thought about that, and I helped route 100%, so that was pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so we're back in the library here. This is going to be our hub where we go to between every world. Um, so there's just a little bit of lore explanation right here. 
Uh, we're going to be moving into what is the hardest single trick in the run. Uh, the first level of this world has a jump. I need to clip into the corner of a source box while maintaining upward momentum. This is going to reset my jump and allow me to skip most of the level. Um, the trick is pretty close to pixel perfect, and sometimes it just decides not to work. So fingers crossed here. And so you'll also see that the um, crystals of this area, wow, that, oh, wow. It's just barely nice. missed it. Didn't have like the slightly height. delayed. Oh, third try. That's Yo, not bad. Nice. Uh, third That's try a pretty difficult trick. <laughs> third try still wastes time, but uh, it's fine, and I got it with it. Yeah, there's another interesting little strat on the second level where he points the uh, soul flame at like the corner of the top end of the box there to actually use it as a source. Now the world that we're in now um, has the fire crystals, which uh, whatever uh, source you're pointing at uh, erupts into flame. Um, so you see these dragons here, if you uh, set them on fire, they actually start uh, working as a moving platform. And here he does an off-screen shot to get the boost to get to the exit of the level. That skips like a long auto scroller section where you're supposed to follow a dragon throughout that like spike pit, but we're not about that life. We're just gonna skip that. Um, that strat was actually found by Breakdown, so from uh, GDQ over right there. Yeah, one of the things that I think is also really cool you, and you see here is um, this game builds on itself extremely well. Um, like, you, it, it introduces new mechanics in a nice and beginner friendly way, but each new world kind of like builds upon it. So you see like, now we have the fire crystals, but we still have the earth and the bounce crystals as well. Um, real quick, he just picked up the most important artifact for the run, which is Firecracker Tail, and that increases movement speed by 25%, which is pretty self-explanatory for why that would help in a speed run. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's not the only crystal he's going to be using, but it is the most important one that he'll be using the most in the run. It's going to be our go-to for a majority of the run. Uh, it's one of the single most useful artifacts in the game. Yeah, so this level has the fireworks, which are sort of a projectile that fires in a linear direction. Um, and so yeah, that's the end of World 3. There um, are a total of 11 worlds in the speedrun, just so anyone, just in case anyone's keeping, keeping count. All right, and with that, we have time for a quick donation if you want to go ahead and rattle one off. I would love to. I have $250 from Oshu that says, Hey Muffin, super excited to see this run and I know the rest of the community is too. Hopefully this donation can help give you good corner clips. Good luck with the run. Thanks, Oshu. All right, so 4-1 here is one of the fastest levels in the game. Uh, if you blinked, you probably missed it. Um, so this world introduces the swap crystals, which uh, swaps keys position with whatever uh, source uh, the player is pointing at. Um, in this case, the boxes will like switch positions, but if it's you know a, st a stationary source, you just launch yourself all the way there. Uh, this is really useful in the speed run for kind of just making this the shortest world in the game because you just kind of just blink across the level. If you know where the crystals are, you can just do some absolutely crazy uh, tricks here. So just completely skip that entire level there instantly. <laughs> it's more than halfway through the world already. Basically, any level there's a swap crystal, and you can imagine there's some shenanigans, because it just allows you to cover such a huge distance. Yeah, so you also can see that he's breaking multiple crystals at a time in some of these levels. Um, basically, the, the effects of the crystals stack. So if you break a swap and a boost crystal, uh, you swap positions with whatever your source is, but then also get that additional boost momentum afterwards. Yeah, we're almost done with the blizzard. Uh, we completely neglected the, the main mechanic of the blizzard, which is there's falling ice through a lot of these levels. And if you're fast enough, you just never have to worry about that. So that's a, a speedrunner trick right there. Just go fast and you don't have to worry about it. But again, yeah, we will be seeing more falling obstacles later once we get to world eight. Yeah, but again, back in the library. Uh, so we're learning a little bit more lore here. We are currently in the Alaska section of the run. So uh, this game, the two spirits are being reincarnated multiple times, and we're going through their various lives and seeing why that bond was originally damaged. So World 5 introduces the Arrow Crystals, which uh, fire a projectile uh, in a linear direction, but importantly, they act as their own source, so they're self-sustained. Uh, this is going to be coming to play once we get to the bonus levels, but they're also just generally really helpful in World 5 here as well. Yeah, and this level is pretty straightforward. We're going to be hunting some caribou coming up in this level right here. Uh, so 
just this is a uh, part of the story as well where the two spirits were up in Alaska hunting these caribou. So you see that pop up in their memories as well. And the successful hunt is what's locking the end gate of each of these levels. Oh, this is probably one of the more difficult levels in the run. Uh, this strategy was developed by the world record holder Black Rose. And it is very, very tight to beat the blizzard cycle in this run. Um, so I have to be able to hit this swamp crystal into the caribou on the lower half, then hit the upper half, which I just barely did, and beat that blizzard cycle in order to finish the level as quickly as possible. So we want to we wanna go fast, so hitting that early cycle is very, very important. Uh, this is one of the only slowdowns in the run. Um, I need to make sure to hit that arrow crystal as I'm falling. Uh, if without the slowdown, it's like super, super inconsistent. You have to absolutely whip your mouse over to the other side of the screen. And I'm just not that accurate with it. So I gotta do the pretty little slowdown right there. Yeah, we haven't really touched too much on the differences. Um, the main difference between the controller and key, mouse and keyboard is uh, there's more precision on the mouse and keyboard, but the controller has actually a built-in like auto correction, which means if you're trying to make a like, if you're trying to hit a specific crystal, it's easier on the curse. It's easier to use the controller in certain levels. But if you're trying to um, be precise with the direction you're pointing in, it's usually better to use mouse and keyboard. Yeah, and I just swap. I swap every level depending on what is the best control scheme for that level. Um, but we got a little bit more lore here, so if you want to read off another donation real quick, we can go ahead and do that. Okay, I've got fifty dollars from. Am Nino Minones, I think, saying it's my birthday today and my gift to myself is a donation to Doctors Without Borders. Loving the event so far and looking forward to the rest of it. Thank you and happy birthday. Happy birthday. So we're getting into world six here. The um, crystals here are the earth crystals, which sort of, as soon as you break them, create a circular kind of pool void thing of purple. And I say pool because uh, your momentum actually, like the direction you're pointing in, like uh, you actually carry your momentum out of the uh, rift there, which is how I was able to slip in through that uh, set of ice crystals to um, skip through that portion of the level. Uh, here he's doing a, another corner clip here to be able to get enough height to just barely thread the needle with one of these uh, rift crystals on the right to create a rift and jump straight to the exit of the level. Having a bit of a hard time here. Uh, I blame this on the uh, purple soul flame. Uh, the purple soul flame is the fastest soul flame, but the blue soul flame is better for corner clip jumps. Uh, completely, that is uh, completely accurate and not 100% made up at this point at all. Uh, but yeah, so this corner clip jump, it just barely gives you enough height to create a void pistol on the corner right here and head straight to the end of the level. Um, yeah, that one took a little bit longer than I would like, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, it, it still saves a ton of time. That level, doing it normally, is very, very slow. And I missed the clock crystal right there. Um, one of the things that's really nice about this game is it's not terribly punishing. If you wind up missing something, uh, you get to restart the level very, very quickly. Kind of like akin to Super Meat Boy and other games like that. Where if you mess up, you're just immediately back at the start and it's not punishing that at all. We're just kind of flying through the levels right here. Um, I, I consider this world to be one of the harder worlds in the run. Um, it has that corner clip jump in 7-3, seven, in seven, which is very, very difficult. And then it has probably the hardest end level of any of the worlds. Um, so this level right here, we have to clear out some caribou. And we have, there's two different caribou we have to clear out. And then we use a little micro ledge to get over that initial platform which allows us to skip a good part of the level. And then this one right here, I have to have a, basically a perfect jump to be able to uh, hop over these spikes right here. Um, so I do use the game slow down and hopefully that's good. All right, first try, let's go. Very nicely done. <laughs> you can clap for that. <laughs> uh, it's too late, it, it's too late to be clapping in my house. <laughs> just, just, just know that I'm, I'm giving you the round of applause here. <laughs> clap just very quietly, golf clap. Uh, so yeah, we're getting a little bit more lore, so go ahead and rip off another donation for us. Cool. I have $50.05 from Poetics that says a huge thank you to not only the runners and commentators, but the tech crew who keeps everything so smooth and beautiful all event long. 
Yeah, we're getting into World 7 here, and the uh, crystal introduced in this world is the, uh, I don't know its exact name, I just call it the Fireball. Uh, just completely skipped level 2 there, just absolutely, absolutely cracked up. Yeah, it's basically a Celeste Feather. Yeah, um, and so it kind of lets you shoot in a particular direction, um, as well as breaking things along the way, and moving these weird little volleyballs that are also, uh, also serve as a source. Um, at least that's what I refer to them as, because they look like a volleyball to me. So that's a controller-only strat. You do have to hit a completely off-screen shot that just isn't possible on keyboard and mouse. So we refer to that as some cheaper controller strategies, but it is the fastest way to clear that level. Uh, we're in a bit of a pickle here. Yeah, we're gonna have to start that one. Um, yeah, these little volleyballs are probably the hardest thing to get consistent in this run. When I was learning this, uh, it was like, just one of the pain points of learning this speed run, uh, just because they're they're so inconsistent in the way they behave and the way you have to pick them. So for this level, I do use keyboard and mouse, even though like using the little fireball with keyboard and mouse is very uncomfortable because you have to like aim where it's going. Um, but the precision is absolutely needed to get the volleyball to go where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. So I'm just barely having enough crystals to complete that last level. Some of these levels he makes look easy, other ones are legitimately very tricky. And as is tradition, Does help. any level with a spot crystal, you just get the you go right to the exit. <laughs> yeah, so on that level right there, he hits an off-screen fireball crystal to just shoot straight to the end, and that's World 7. Alright, back in the library here, let's do another donation. Cool. We have $25 from Luma Levy that says, I've been watching SGDQ for a few years now, and it's always an amazing week. Thanks a lot to all the staff for your amazing work and to all of the runners for their awesome runs. Good luck to all for the end of the event. You rock. Awesome. So in that cutscene, we're introduced to Ha, who is again, he's kindred spirit, and he is not having a good time of it in the afterlife. Uh, the spirit that uh, his his life has not been great up to this point. His many lives, and now that is why the nightmares are attacking the afterlife. So we're traveling now into the London section of the game, and we have to deal with the air raid mechanic. If you want to go ahead and talk about that. Yeah, it's um, essentially you need to trigger an air raid to be able to get to the gate at the end of the level, which gets you to the next level. Um, but of course, it's raining fireballs from left to right across the screen, so you do need to make sure that you take cover as well. Um, so I haven't really touched on it yet, but the um, crystal of this world is the uh, pull crystal. It's the exact opposite of the bounce crystal. Um, it pulls you towards whatever direction your soul flame is being pointed at, um, and it does actually use lucky frogs. So there's a reason why we switch back to that, even though fire cracker tail would, you know, in theory, be uh, really useful uh, because the extra pull from the uh, Bucky Frog is essential to beating certain levels really quickly. Yeah, it's really handy that the Lucky Frog works on the pool crystals here. Because it's not, it, it doesn't describe it like that, but uh, it, it is the fastest artifact for this world, and it's one of the few artifact swaps we actually wind up making. Yeah, for this level we have to break these branches because we're going to have this air raid come in and it's going to take out our source blocks. So we want to go completely under the level, skipping over the fire and heading straight to the gate. And this is probably the hardest, this is the hardest world. Uh, this is the hardest level of this world. And I'm really happy that I got that one first try. Uh, yeah, I saw you struggle with <laughs> that in practice yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it, when, when we did a run through of this the other day, that level took me, I think like six, seven tries, so. Uh, and it's one of the longer levels in that world. It just, it's painful when you fail it, but I'm, oh, that's so good. So good to get that one first try. Uh, but yeah, so here we see more of these nightmares attempting the afterlife, and we're trying to defend this Kindle Week over here. Uh, these are spirits that have not yet reincarnated, um, so there are little baby spirits and we need to help them out. But again, just some more lore section. If you want to go ahead and rattle off a donation, that's great. I have a very generous $500 donation from Zach that says, had to donate during Evergate. Such an awesome puzzle platformer. Thank you so much. That was very generous. Very much. Thank you. Thank you all for donating. That's how we got the 
how we got the incentive net, and we still got plenty more incentives. Uh, quite like the awesome one you'll see at the end of this run. Uh, so this level's really, really basic. Um, now we're going into 9-2, uh, which introduces the EMP um, hexagons, which uh, essentially you cannot use your soul flame while you're standing in them, although you are able to still use the effects of crystals, such as the, um, I still call them the spring crystals or jump crystals or whatever. Uh, they look like they look like a spring to me, um, but what they do is uh, for each ring that is around key, um, you can get uh, Sunny can do an additional jump um, in midair, um, so long as key does not hit the ground before uh, using them. So using a little cheeky swap strat there, and then uh, getting a jump crystal to skip straight to the end of the level, and then now we're already at the end. Of, uh, we're already at the next level, and just just taking some well-angled shots to get enough jumps to get to the end of this level. Yeah, and doing these levels is pretty difficult because I have basically have to do them on keyboard and I don't get the benefit of the auto in. Um, so that, that prior level right there is some very, very tight angles. And normally you would use slowdown to complete that level, but this is a speed run and we want to go fast. It also here. does want to make sure he's going fast enough to not get hit by the laser, which just happened there. <laughs> when you're going fast, it doesn't happen typically, but every now and then, uh, these sort of work as a damage projectile. So storing his jump uh, after the laser breaks the block in the way, then jumping, then using the additional jump uh, while not standing in the MP to finish the level off there. So very nice World 9. Now, coming up, we actually have a boss fight. Um, you might have noticed that the game does not have any of those, and indeed, this is the only one in the run. Now, ordinarily, this fight's kind of tricky. Um, you have to get yourself into position to make a precisely angled shot, but uh, you pick up the artifact called the Spirit Arrow, which uh, makes arrows home in on enemies, uh, which makes this fight kind of a joke. <laughs> yeah, uh, just because this isn't an RPG doesn't mean the RPG jerk bird can't be here. Uh, so this is our bird that's trying to ruin our day here, uh, but we're going to very easily dispatch him using the spirit arrow. Uh, this is, I don't know if this is developer intended, but it's some, it's some spicy cheese. Very, very stinky, very delicious. And that is the only, that is the boss fight of the game, uh, but we're going to be transitioning into another world, so if you want to go ahead and, we have, I think we have time for two donations here. This is a little bit of a long effect. Yeah, I actually, speaking of devs, I have $500 from Eric Dev that says, Evergate Dev here. The Stone Lantern Games team is absolutely thrilled to have Evergate played at GDQ. Our speedrunning community members have been champions of the game since the alpha release, and we are so thankful for their support. Good luck on the run, Sunny Muffin. Save the afterlife for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for making such a great game. <laughs> And then, Big shout out to Stone Lantern. Do I have time for one more? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, $25 from Strick that says, can we get a ha ha ha? Oh, wait, wrong muffin. Good luck on the run. <laughs> uh, so this level's really, really trippy. Uh, just swap to completely just skip everything in, in this level. So World 10's gimmick, it doesn't introduce any new crystals, but it does introduce these sources that change all of the crystals on the level to uh, whatever source he pointed to. Uh, in that level's case, just using Swap and uh, the Spring. Uh, so here we're using some Rift Crystals to get up quite high into the level. And now you're starting to see these uh, Magma Voids. Like all, I mean, I think they're just called Voids, but they look like Magma to me. And those are instant death, and they grow infinitely. So Sunny wants to try and clear these levels quickly. Um, thankfully, there are some really quick strats, like in that last level. Uh, we're going for uh, swag here. Uh, this is the fast strat, but it's very unsafe. Oh, we didn't do it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> you can complete that level without jumping through the middle, and it, it saves like two frames. But uh, we're, we'll, we'll do the safe jump and finish it out pretty quickly. Yeah, that is the Underlands. So we are almost ready to head into the final book of the game. Uh, yeah, this game goes fast, and that's one of the things I love about it. Uh, it's, it's a very quick game to sit down and play through. Uh, if you're playing through it casually, it might take you a little bit longer than this run, uh, but it, it's just absolutely fantastic. 
Um, so we're heading into the storm. Uh, this is the section of the game where Ha is using his darkness powers to take control of Ki. And he is like very, very upset at Ki. He thinks that Ki is the reason for their bond being damaged. Um, but now we're gonna be playing as Ha, going through the memories from Ki's perspective. And we're gonna see things look a little bit different. Um, things in the storm get a little bit crazy, and we're basically going to have a mashup of all of the mechanics that we've learned so far combined. Yeah, so this just serves as one big final world, um, some fairly complex levels. Honestly, it's, it's actually extremely difficult to commentate this game because it's just the sheer amount of strats packed into every level, so hopefully you guys at least are able to understand the gist of what else is happening here. Um, so Sunny going for a tricky little uh, jump to get to angle the air crystal to, uh, just precisely enough to break that uh, rock there so that when he triggers the air raid it will actually break the, uh, the barrier around the gate. Okay. And then he's able to skip to the end of the level, uh, skipping a pretty decent amount of uh, crystals along the way. So the fun this fact level. about this level is uh, the world record holder Black Rose. He plays basically exclusively on keyboard mouse but uh, you have to use controller on this level because you have to fly off screen and KBM does not let you do that. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the only level he uses controller for, just out of spite, but it is faster to fly up on top of this and uh, just complete the level very, very quickly like that. Yeah, just completely Mario 1-2 that level. <laughs> so this level's neat, he uses a, um, a rift crystal to get just enough height so that he can swap over to this dragon and then storing his jump jump straight to the end skipping everything that you see below there all right so we're gonna be heading into the heart of the storm right now not to be confused with starcraft uh but ha has now completely given into the darkness and he's retreating into the storm itself and we need to go in and get him uh the game's mechanics get kind of wonky at this point but i think it's a really fitting end to the game Oh yeah, absolutely. This ending uh, is kind of one of the parts that made me like realize, hey, I need to. I seriously need to recommend this game to people. Uh, so the crystals here, um, when you break them, they actually empower key in a way that uh, essentially gets you infinite use of them, so long as you have a source. So just completely infinitely boosting to the end there. Um, and then this level has infinite uh, rifts, so we can just kind of float to the end of the level. Like there is some danger without the. Uh, how the voids are in, in, uh, expanding uh, fairly rapidly, but I don't know, it's just a very climactic uh, kind of finishing point to the end of the game. So we're coming up here on the very last couple levels of the game. Yeah, so we got some infinite jump right there to navigate through some sections. And then finally, we're gonna end off the fierce flame section where we're just gonna use some precision to fly through these little tiny gaps in the spikes and make sure that we go as quickly as possible. Um, it's actually faster to go under this flame right here. It's a little tight, but we made it, not a big deal. And that is basically the end of that uh, escape section. So we found Ha here in the middle of the storm and we're gonna be basically talking him off the ledge and uh, Ki and Ha are going to rekindle their bond and they're gonna mend their relationship and everything is gonna be happy-go-lucky. We get to see, we get taken back to the China section of the run uh, where they, where everything started and they're gonna go back to basically being kids again. And it's, a, it's actually a very, very cool story. And the way that they do the storytelling in this game is absolutely fantastic. So I would recommend it. Um, but yeah, we have, we have quite a little bit of time before the actual end of the run. Um, so if you wanna go ahead and read off a good handful of donations, we can go ahead and do that before the run is over. All right, I have a handful of donations. Uh, $50 from Pandora says, first time with a job, very happy to finally be able to support. The event has been amazing and a big part of my life the last few years. I've been inspired to play so many games I didn't know, and I also learned that we need to save the frames. So, sorry, animals. Thank you for your donation. Uh, Barwell donates $50, saying, this has been a great event with great staff and runners doing an amazing job for such a wonderful cause. Keep up the great work, and, uh, and all the best to the runners. 
and then $250 from virtual, saying, I love GDQ, thanks for the memories. All right, and I think we're gonna go ahead and do our shout outs here because again, we, we have some more lore that's going on, some more cutscenes before the credits actually go. Uh, so Ghost, do you have any shout outs for us? Um, honestly, just shout outs to Stone Lantern Games, uh, again, I guess, for, you know, just making this game. You know, stacked year of 2020, and I still felt like this was my personal game of the year. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's just packed full of just really fun levels. It's got a really neat little story that it's, uh, you know, Hold in an interesting way. Um, a bit of a shout out to Emre, who did uh, a run for the Sibley for Frost Fatales last year. I uh, was one of the first people I saw uh, play this game before I ended up picking it up myself. So definitely big shout out to Emre. Yeah, I just want to shout out the community as a whole. Uh, just uh, Black Rose for all of the work that you put into this run. Um, again, current world record holder. He developed a lot of the strats and it's absolutely amazing. Um, we're going to be heading into time here once the screen fades to black. Time. GG. All right. But wait, there's more. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the game real quick because we made the incentive for the bonus levels. These are some of my favorite levels in the game. So this is going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm so happy we met this incentive. Uh, one second here, I gotta restart my local stream. All right, looks like everything is good to go. All righty. All right, are we ready on the timer? So these are the bonus levels. Uh, this incentive was met like yesterday, which is absolutely fantastic. We raised $5,000 for MSF. Uh, so these levels, each one is associating with a various world throughout the game, um, but they're basically like the Celeste Seasides. They're much longer, much more complicated, much more difficult. Uh, so we're gonna run through all nine of these very, very quickly. So let's go ahead and do a countdown for timer in five, four, three, two, one, go. So as mentioned, this is uh, themed around each of the uh, different worlds. This first level is a very vertical level that is pretty much built around the boost crystals, uh, hence the lucky frog. Uh, it's a pretty simple level, um, but we're gonna actually start seeing them get a lot more complicated. And you just saw at the end there, you did uh, a dash, which is an ability that uh, isn't really used in like any other category of this game, but uh, just because for the bonus levels, it actually does make some of these uh, much more bearable. Like this level here, which allows him to not have to break as many crystals to get over certain uh, obstacles here, and it allows him to just barely clear that tall um, wall there that would have otherwise killed him, uh, skipping a pretty sizable chunk of the level. Um, here we're using an artifact called Volatile Candle, which turns him into... Uh, turns him into like a projectile missile similar to the fireball crystals uh, whenever he breaks a fire crystal. Yeah. And here he's actually making use of what's called an artifact swap. This isn't something you're actually intended to normally do. Uh, if you swap your artifacts in the middle of a level, the um, game resets the level. However, if you um, select the artifact and close the menu on the exact same frame, uh, you can uh, switch artifacts in level without having to reset them. I promise you I'm not that good at the game, it's just a double bind, so I uh, take a little bit of mystique away from the frame-perfect trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's coming up on the uh, winter wind here, which is, um, uses, it makes good use of the swap crystal to skip a sizable chunk of the level. I tried to go and from the swag dash. There. You can use dash to get to the end of the level. You can do that level completely off screen, uh, but it's very, very hard. So Rip Maze, this level is extremely short. Um, I feel like it's better, more designed around 100% because you can just straight up use an artifact to burn the level, or to burn the uh, the block at the end of the level and just skip it entirely. Oh yeah, we get to use the dragon head, which is the fastest form of the game. Yes, this level has a couple of different paths. He's going to take the harder path, mostly because it's faster. Um, and the, the artifact that he has makes him have much more tight control with his uh, 
with his uh, missile here. Fierce Flame, I keep forgetting the names. I played this game last year and I reviewed commentary just in the weeks before this run. I don't remember exactly everything. Uh, yeah, just using the uh, fireball to skip straight to the end of the level. It is agile control, but it's still, you still have a little bit that you have to work around. It's pretty difficult. So this is a very technical level. It uses the char uh, Charger Pack artifact, which has a glitch that lets him uh, double jump off of solid ground. Uh, this allows him to get to the top of the exit area, and then uh, you can jump off. Uh, after you're jumping off, you can swap to an artifact uh, quickly to maintain his original jump. And just use the dragon head to make his way over to the uh, air raid, and then a boost, use a boost of the crystal on the bottom of the map, and switch back to uh, make his way to the exit. Using both the pole and the uh, fireball there. And then finally we have the Sourceless Skies. As the name would suggest, this is uh, a level with no sources, so he needs to line up with the arrow crystals here. Which is the only source in this entire level. Luckily we gathered enough jump crystals here. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Like, it's pretty tight. Uh, I don't think I have enough of these boost crystals to actually make it to the exit, so we're, we're gonna just make sure. We're gonna double check, make sure we have enough. Oh, we didn't make it, drag. <laughs> and he, you were trying to bait them, and, and you actually missed it. It's like, That's okay. You we got that. a first try. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We just wanted to give the people a little bit more content. But yeah, those are the bonus levels. They're fantastic. Um, so I just do just want to give a final shout out to Stone Lantern Games for developing an absolutely amazing game. Uh, Y'all are great. Your interactions with the community are great. And if you enjoyed this speedrun at all, please go show these devs some love. They're fantastic. And then I want to give one big shout out to Ghost Kumo. Uh, just because of the timing <laughs> of this run, it was really hard to pin down a commentator. And you stepped up despite not being a runner of the game. And I just absolutely cannot thank you enough for putting in the time and effort to make this run awesome. Like without you, it would not have been anywhere near as good. But that's <laughs> every game. Oh, yeah, it's so uh, good. Real, real quick, yeah. Um, Shout out to Sunny Muffin, that was actually a really well performed run. Uh, 32 uh, was, I believe, your time, which is very good. Um, the uh, shout outs to Stone Lantern, shout outs to MR Miller, who did the soundtrack. I didn't really talk much about it. The soundtrack of this game is very good. I've been listening to it for pretty much this entire run. Um, go check out this game. It's $10 on Steam, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, I want to say, as well. Like, it's on basically any platform you could, you could ask for. Um, this version is the ideal version for speed running, but it, it, it's, it's great on all platforms. Yeah, and with that, I'm going to bed. Have a good night. <laughs> Me too. All right, thank you so much, Sunny Muffin. That was a very informative speed run. Not only was it fun to watch, I feel like I learned a lot. So that was very, very cool. Thank you. I have more donations for that Samus helmet. I'm seeing everywhere. I have $50 from Jacob saying, I need to get in on that wearable Samus helmet. Let's finish this marathon, marathon off strong. Agreed. And then $50 from Radical Eddie that says, wearable Samus helmet? You don't gotta tell me twice. In the spirit of cool headwear, $50 to Catgirl Madeline. And with that incentive, let's see, where are we? We are a little over 14,000 out of the 49,000 needed. So keep those donations coming. Remember when you go to donate, click the incentive that you're looking for and, uh, and donate for that. All right, my friends, that is it for me. That is my last shift for hosting for SGDQ 2021. Thank you so much for making it memorable and fun as always. Uh, it's time for me to go to bed. <laughs> I'm going to hand this off to Char Bunny and uh, they're gonna get you set with the rest of the
Hello everyone, you're watching Summer Games Done Quick 2021 Online, powered by Twitch. My name is Charbunny and I'll be your host for our next few games. This is actually my second time on the mic this event, so chat, I feel like we know each other by now, right? Well, since we're friends, I actually brought a challenge for everyone watching. See, just a bit ago, I actually did a speedrun of a new category I'm calling $5 Donation Incentive Percent. What I did is I timed myself donating $5 to Doctors Without Borders and assigning those $5 to one of the open donation incentives. I picked Celeste Catgirl, but you can choose whatever you'd like. To try this at home, simply time yourself starting when you click the donate button on the GDQ website and ending when you see the payment verification screen. My time was 36 seconds. <laughs> I'm happy with that, uh, but my routing was subpar and I think it's beatable. So let me know if you do manage to outspeed me and feel free to make up your own donation percent categories as well. I'm hoping I see a few of those coming through, so good luck. Speaking of donations, we have $50 from Kale who says more Celeste, which is a great reminder that we have some Celeste incentives coming up. I think we did meet a couple of them, but if you wanna see Celeste as a cat girl, you do need to get those donations in. We also have quite a few donations coming in for one of our prizes. We have $50 from, I'm gonna miss the name, but Asculap saying a wearable Samus helmet? 